Welcome back to Claiming Your Creative Voice. I'm Lindsay, and this is my friend, Leslie. Good morning. Good morning. We are so excited to be here with you guys for another episode. And today, we wanted to talk about something that we can all know and relate to. And this was actually a topic that was mentioned by someone on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because this is something that I know I personally have come up against my entire life, even when I was a full on spring chicken. Right. I'm only a half spring chicken now, <laughs> but when I was a full one, yeah. <laughs> this was already churning in the background for me. Was it for you? Yes. Oddly. Yeah. Oddly. And, and what we're talking about is, yeah, we're talking about women of, how do we want to say that? Well, any woman over 25. I know. The music industry. I know. And that's pretty much true. It is. That's pretty much true. So, so true. So that's our topic. We're coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. We are in this beautiful tea room at Still House Herbals Apothecary again. Happy to be here. And yes, near and dear to my heart because I just turned 50. Yeah. And I just literally know it's not downhill from here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I also... And also, how good does she look, too? Oh, my gosh, stop. I yeah. was watching some video back last night, and I was just like, there's no way she's 50. Like, you look amazing. Oh, but I am. Oh, but I am. Thank you, Lindsay. And it gives me so much hope. Oh, thank you. And so I don't even pay her to say that. So... <laughs> that was not know, a paid it endorsement. Wasn't, it wasn't, although I'll take it. So, one thing that I, I bet all of us can attest to, those of us who are especially in the music or around the music industry... I bet we all know women who are breaking through as an artist yeah. who feel like they have to lie about their age. Like, I truly do know people I who are too. breaking artists that they're beautiful, young, prime of their life in their early 30s mm -hmm. and feeling like they have to lie and say they're in their 20s mm -hmm. or they won't be taken as... Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah. Or valid. They're not valid anymore. Yes, they're not valid. They're not relevant. Right. Jeez. What the hell is that? Ugh. So It's a load of bullshit. That's it, what that is. It is a load of bullshit. I mean, I think that the thing that is always so thought-provoking for me is you use the words valid and relevant and all of these things as it pertains to how a woman is viewed. Mm -hmm. And I always like to break it down. Like, I like to get a little bit granular, which is, I'm not a really detail-oriented person, but I do like to get granular about thinking through why is something the way that it is. Mm -hmm. And you have to go back to the fact, and we talked about this in the previous episode, where the music industry really grew up, the modern music industry, I should say, it really grew up in the past hundred years mm -hmm. as the Industrial Revolution grew. Yes. And so music was traditionally something that was an experience that was shared between artist and listener or community or in like sacred, you know, ritual and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then it became a product. Yeah. And it was run by men. Yeah. And so men were making decisions yeah. about how to productize. So of course, like, God love you men. Totally of course. get it. We're not but a lot of the decisions. Man. Right. Not at all. But like a lot of the decisions around how to productize music were made with the other head. <laughs> right. <laughs> because in their minds, they're thinking, well, this looks good and this doesn't. And they're probably, you know what I mean? Like it was just in my opinion, again, totally my opinion, there was a very different approach and a very different psychology that was happening around the decision-making process of what would sell records and what wouldn't. And so of course a sexy woman, and I think this is true even for women, like I love looking at beautiful women. Sure. I'm mostly straight, mm -hmm. but I like looking at beautiful women more than I like looking at men, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so I totally get that, like, even for women visually, it is, it is pleasing to look at a beautiful woman and, and especially like, you know, there's something psychologically that happens with all of us when she is especially like sexy, mm -hmm. you know? So there is that piece of it that has kind of just evolved over the eons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that has start, started to embed that story into all of the minds of young women. Because again, you think about like when that's the only thing that we're seeing, it really goes back to the conversation that so many people are having right now about representation and how yeah. we as women 
that were artists that were thinking about, I want to grow up and sing or perform or play or be in the music industry on any level, what we saw represented was the beautiful Finn woman, yes. maybe pop star, maybe not necessarily genre specific, but it was still a woman that was beautiful and glamorous and all of those things. And so that's what we assumed, you know, we had to be to be deemed valid or relevant or whatever. Right. I mean, and you know what you said, and again, no, no man bashing at all, because this is horrible for men as as well as women but there's patriarchy at play here mm -hmm. i mean a thousand percent you know because if a woman is seen as valid because of her youthfulness and her looks you know alone then it's discounting right the woman's innate power mm -hmm. or brilliance or brilliance that comes from within mm -hmm. And, you know, to, to swing back around to the ageism mm -hmm. that can be happening in this industry, um, although I did, I, it, you know, it's definitely a little better. There are some, some yes, strides being is, made. Yes, I mean, absolutely. Um, and there's definitely awareness. Mm -hmm. And everything starts with awareness, yeah, right, in my totally. opinion. But to swing back around, you know... Not to say this can only happen with age, because I would say that I'm just getting my shit together in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. like feeling like, oh, I get me now. <laughs> like, I'm just like fully kind of yeah. understanding and unearthing, you know, all of me in a lot of ways, um, you know, at age 50. So I'm not saying it takes everyone that long. God forbid, <laughs> maybe I'm a little slow, but um, but I but I do want to say that when you're going into the menopausal years, there is that wisdom piece that comes along with, you know, one of the side effects is that foggy thinking, you know, mm -hmm. that you can start to get in perimenopause and menopause. And almost all women, you know, have an experience with that usually yeah. when they're when they're in this time. It's pretty bad like yeah. you can be just like um I'll be like Evan um he's like mom I want a snack I'll be like okay well there's um I'm trying to think of the word apple I'm trying to think of the word oh apple. oh I yeah can't think of the I, word apple I'm the not round, very the round yet, thing, but I already have that the, so the no. round thing that you like <laughs> to eat anyway so the, the foggy thinking the foggy brain is, is a real thing I'm, okay where I'm going with this is that there are some cultures and peoples that revere women going into this perimenopausal and menopausal time and revere the innate wisdom that comes, that yeah. foggy thinking can actually be looked at as a gift yeah. because what it does is it takes us out of our left brain, mm. like logic centered, like gotta make shit happen on the outside, gotta put yeah. all my ducks in a row, you know, that very yang kind of uh, male energy, which we all have male energy and female energy. I get that. I'm not yeah. saying do away with all male right. energy. Right. However, that foggy thinking can take us out of that left brainness, put us more in our right brain, and put us more in into ourselves where we are where we are living more intuitively mm -hmm. and in With that more presence maybe. Exactly, more presence and into that again the right brain. Yeah. So suddenly we're just feeling like we're like pulling out the paints. We're like writing the songs. We're like, and I can attest to this because I'm a songwriter now. And this is a new thing for me, like within a, just a little more than a year I've been yeah. writing. Yeah. And that, that shit just dropped in for me. So yeah. I'm really feeling this, this kind of thing that I'm talking about right now and, and thinking, wow, what are we missing out on right. by not allowing, you know, Older totally. women in this season and even beyond 50s, 60s, 70s, of 40s of their life to, to feel and be just as relevant yeah. um, when they are the keepers. Like that, because that's the, those are the ages where we realize, oh, the treasure is within me. Mm -hmm. the, tre the treasure that I've been hunting. Yeah. It's yeah. here. Yeah. And we're plumbing to the depths. Totally. Like that's oh what God. starts to happen. And, and yes. so the creativity, the abundance of creative juiciness. Yeah. What a shame that we're not just kind of like highlighting and celebrating that. Well, and I think that like I'm so freaking excited that you said that because one of the things that I've always thought 
is a 22 year old girl with perky tits is beautiful to look at. Let's be 100%. honest. But like, she's a 22 year old girl. Right. She might be an old soul, but she's still happen. only a 22 year old girl. Right. And at the end of the day, and for all those 22 year olds out there, I hope I'm not offending you by calling you a girl, but I remember myself at 22 and I thought I knew everything. And I was, I was an old soul, still am. And I am a wise person, always have been, but I was still fucking 22. Right. You know what I mean? Like there was just, there's a piece of, of life experience that no one at 22 has access to yet. And so. That's all it is. It's it that, doesn't. The years on the earth. Right, exactly. And That's so all. when you think about like if there's this glass ceiling where women after a certain age, which we all kind of joke is like probably somewhere in your mid-20s, are just not relevant in the music world anymore. Like you said, you're missing out on so much wisdom, yeah. so much art. It's like wine. I've heard yes. people compare it to wine. Like yes. the better wines are the ones that have sat on the shelves for decades and have fermented and they've really like come into their own. They mm. have complexity, they have depth, they have, yeah. you know, all of this other, all these other attributes that they can then put into their music and into right. their art. And I spoke at a songwriting um, retreat, I guess it was about a year ago now, and there was a woman there who was in her early 40s. At the end of the retreat, she'd kind of been carrying a bit of a secret that she had to go and have a breast biopsy the mm -hmm. following week, and she was really fearful. Yeah. And she let everybody know on the last day, and we were just kind of giving her some words of support. And the interesting thing was, is that I was like, you have to freaking keep writing music because the other 40 year old women that are terrified to go in and get a breast biopsy yeah. need your music right now. Yeah. They need you they to need stand. Yes. They need mm -hmm. you to stand in your authenticity, in your truth, in your power, in your 40 year oldness, fearful of getting a breast biopsy. And they so need true, you to Lindsay. freaking show up. Yeah, because, because you want to know how many women I've dealt she's with She's not going to connect to the 22-year-old song about 69ing. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> haven't heard that one. <laughs> oh, you haven't heard the Ariana Grande song I really about 69ing? I really have It's haven't. the most ridiculous oh, dear piece God. of trash. Oh, dear God. I like, really have to go And it makes that. me so mad because she's an incredibly like yeah. brilliant vocal talent. Yeah. And I'm like, why are you singing about oh, this? Oh, my gosh. Like, no shame That's on 69. But like, well, lay over the yes. It's, it's just like, that. it's not even like thoughtfully written. Like if you're going to write about like some obscure sexual act, <laughs> like at least make it poetic. <laughs> Do you I, know what I'm, I'm not, saying? I cannot speak further because I have not heard it. I will be listening to it as soon as we're done here today. Please do. First thing on my list. Yeah, I think it's called 35... 34, 35 plus 34 or something, because it oh, equals 16. My, okay. <laughs> so a little math Real in cryptic there. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Anyway. But I couldn't agree with you more. So it's, it's, it's you know, seasons of life. Seasons of totally. life. And, and these later seasons, let's say 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, um, and even 30s. I mean, like you said, post 25. Yeah. Oh, because I have so many clients that are in their late 20s and they're like, I'm already over the hill. Oh. Just and I'm just like, ridiculous. Dear Lord, you know, so, so much yeah. juicy life is still to come mm -hmm. and so much self discovery and, and just transformation, transformation. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and just feeling good in your own skin, yeah. which, um, there's so much power there because the, the twenties and even, even maybe some early thirties, but I just think of the twenties as being so angsty. Very. They're just so angsty. You're just like Amen. anxious about everything and what everyone thinks and how you're presenting and yeah. and all the external. I remember telling Dustin at one point. I said, I literally want to have kids because I just need something else other, other to or something else to think about other than myself. Uh, I was so tired of thinking about myself. Right. I was like, can I focus my energy somewhere else? Super <laughs> valid. <laughs> you know. Super valid. And that was in my twenties. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't I don't miss that. I don't miss that shit at all. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah. So, so it's just, ladies, don't give up. Let's just keep don't. putting our magic out there. Keep putting out your music. Keep putting out your art. Yeah. Um, and no, and no matter also the age. for the twenty-two year olds, like even the fifty-year-olds yes. need to show up 
for the 22 That's year right. Olds. Women so in their 20s can, see can be like, possible. yeah, they can be like, woohoo, I'm going to be going well into right. my 50s with this shit. But the thing exactly. is, we need to support, you know, what you like to say, you like to say support with your dollars. Yeah. Well, we need to support women out there doing their art, mm-hmm. you know, that are past that prime age of 25 <laughs> um, with our dollars. Totally. And with our. I don't know. You know me. I don't. I don't do social media, and I'm trying to get better about that. I mean, I do it just a smidge, and I'm trying to learn more about it. But we need to support with our, I guess, our support on social media too, yeah. like our likes and our subscriptions and things like that. Yep. But you know, we women, we are so powerful, and we're the so ones who powerful. really spend money on ourselves. Yes. We do that way more than men, in and my opinion. We also on are our typically, betterment. Yes. On our betterment, mm-hmm. on our healing. You know what I mean? Yeah. On those things that are. Um, possibly more meaningful than, you know, materialistic right. items. Right. I mean, we like to buy purses and stuff like that too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, I, but I do feel like women are the ones actively spending their money and their energy on betterment mm-hmm. and on beauty and art. Mm-hmm. And they're also, like, for any anyone that's ever been in a sales job or that's worked in radio or any like marketing like women are typically the decision make the financial decision makers at the home as well and so when you think about like how much you can inform the men in your life because for leslie and i we're the sole well outside of our dogs we are the sole (laughs) female presence in our homes currently um it really is transformative for even the men too, because again, it goes back to that idea of representation and what are our boys seeing? Oh my gosh, you know, the role modeling for the kid. Are they only ever seeing women artists that are under 25 yeah. and that are completely objectified? And, you know, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with being sexy and being naked in a music video if you want to. Like, there's times where I wish I could have been think. 25 and naked Make your in a choice. music Do video at some point. But at the same time, like, there's a level of awareness, especially for, like, the woman in her 20s, where she thinks this is the pinnacle. You know what I mean? Like, cause right. I can go back and be like, who would I have been had I gotten some big record deal at 20? And right. was completely sold as a sex object. Right. And I would have thought it was the pinnacle. And I think about like the Britney Spearses and the Jessica Simpsons of the world that were objectified in that way. And how yeah. much it's messed with their psychology and their sense of who they are. Mm. And I'm like, wow, I would have really thought like this is everything. Like I've made it. And I'm getting to wear all the beautiful gowns. And I'm getting to be the sex pot. And I'm getting to have, like all the women or all the men want to you know, the women want to be, you know, just like me Baby or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That whole idea. And I'm so mm-hmm. glad like on some level that never happened because I was able to have a more normal, natural, healthy involvement of self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> fair. Know? Yeah. Um, rather than having, because again, like your brain is still developing. Like we know scientifically that the brain isn't even done developing completely until you're 30 years old. So I don't know if you had this experience, but I definitely did. Between 30 and 33, I felt like I came online in a new way that I never had been before. It was profound. Indeed. And um, and then I had a therapist tell me once, well, yeah, your brain's not done developing until you're 30. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, that explains it. <laughs> you know, and so you think about, again, like what's not just from like, hey, let's support other women, but also let's do it because we understand that the ripple effects of what are happening is that we're also not unwittingly supporting the continued objectification of women that are, yes, they're adults, but their brains aren't done developing yet. And like, this is not necessarily the best thing for them is to be objectified and productized. Right. Right. Exactly. And circling back around to like, what could we be missing out by all these um, like we talked about women uh, coming into that juicy wisdom and that and living more intuitively and and getting in that right brain more you know during the perimenopausal menopausal years like I talked about vocally this is just interesting you were talking about the brain and the yeah. development mm. vocally how much more are we going to be hearing from some women in their 30s 40s and 50s vocally because of the maturation of the actual the apparatus cords, because yeah. yeah because physiologically it hasn't all happened yet in the 20s oh god yeah that's yeah. so some true some of the richest most yummy 
um, singing is going to be in your 30s and 40s women. Um, and where it just beefs up, you know, yeah. the middle part of the voice starts to beef up and it just starts to be richer from bottom to top. Mm. Um, That's really Locally cool. speaking, so how fun is that? Stay mm -hmm. with it, ladies. Stay with it and see Absolutely. how that voice develops as well as your inner wisdom. And also speaking of, you know, women in their 50s and beyond, I mean, I was making that reference because... I'm 50. Um, we're here, as I mentioned, at Stillhouse Herbal's Apothecary, run by a dear friend of mine named Wendy, who is around my age, and she's a beautiful entrepreneur and just in the prime of her life, a wonderful creator herself, an herbalist, and um, just, you know, doing great. Speaking of women in that later yeah. part of their life, you know, uh, or midway, whatever you want to call yeah. it. But it ain't over. No. Like, not just even close. do not discount the ladies who are more than, you know, older than 25. Yeah. Um, so here we are, and we're drinking tea out of these fabulous cauldron yeah, mugs. I don't know so if you fun. noticed, like, the cauldron. Total cauldron. Um, and we're drinking Seven Sisters Tea Blend, which is one of Wendy's concoctions that she makes here. She blends a lot of teas, and it's seven different flowers. It's called her Seven Sisters Blend. It's delightful. Mm -hmm. um, and we're drinking out of these cauldron mugs. These are by a local um, artist, Allie. She's a friend of mine, so I'll call her Allie. I think she prefers to go by Alexandra, but of big mouth pottery. Big mouth pottery. She's on the socials. But she's on the socials. She is on the socials. <laughs> um, and she's also a wonderful singer. She's a student of mine as well. But um, Wendy also sells her mugs here at the store. And Stillhouse Herbals is yes. in the Donaldson area of Nashville. So we you can get all of your witchy woo woo stuff here. Yes, like, just great, wonderful great place. gifts and witchiness and herbalness and just a great energy to come hang out. For sure, we were commenting. I'm like, don't you wish you could live in this like as your house at all times? Yes. <laughs> and you walk in and the smell is divine. Yeah, but the natural, earthy, herby kind of divine, mm -hmm. um, not synthetic fragrance. Yeah, you know, but just like mm, it feels good in here. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up today, and yeah. we've been offering a, a, a cup of something. Of course, now yeah, we have a I cauldron wanted to say, <laughs> I think that one thing I want to leave everybody with yes. is that, because I always come back to this on some level, the beauty of the digital space mm. is that we don't have the traditional structures, like the patriarchy that you talked about. We don't have those structures dictating who or how or when a woman can or can't start a career as an artist. Yeah. So really, I'm wanting to call everybody to a higher awareness around this because if you're feeling, if you're over 25 and you're feeling like your time is almost up or you're feeling yeah. like you're too old to get started, yeah. I want to call bullshit on that yeah, on behalf yeah. of you because the reality is, is that you are the only one who is going to tell yourself no, there is no suit, there is no structure, there is no paradigm anymore that can dictate whether or not you can have a successful career as an artist on any level. And yeah. you have direct access to the people who need your art via the digital space, via social media. And I just want to leave you all with that. Yes, because it's so that. important. You are the only person that is going to tell you no. There's nothing else that's going to stop you these days. Choose you, ladies. So maybe choose we just you. leave them with a cup of choosing yourself. How do you feel about that? I love that. A cauldron. Stir it up. Stir it up. <laughs> choose choose <yourself>. you. <laughs> Bye.